Hey, it's Anfa from anfamusic.com <clears throat> and today uh, I'm gonna show you how to synthesize a string pad sound using Zenith Sub FX, of course. Before I do that, I want to thank all for you, thank you all for showing support and interest in these videos and that you show me that you appreciate what I share. Thanks. Like it's it's good to know that what I do is needed. It makes me want to record more videos like this one. So let's get to Zenith Sub FX. I want to make a string patch, string pad sound. And I'm going to do this with pad synth. I have bot line here and the MIDI keyboard hooked up. And I'm going to start with pad synth because, well, pad synth is a very well suited synth for that kind of sounds. Uh, you can see that I enabled it and it doesn't make a sound because uh, pad synth works by playing samples. It generates samples so you need to hit apply changes before anything can be heard because when you hit apply changes pad synth regenerates the samples that it's using. So this is something to remember when you're using pad synth that you need to hit apply changes. It's going to hit become red whenever you change anything that uh, that requires the changes because the samples are played back and then they're filtered and then they are processed with the amplifier section and they are pitched. So these changes don't require recalculating the samples, but changing the characteristics of the actual timber uh, need. So to make a string pad we need to change the basic waveform because right now it's it's a sine wave and that's just one fundamental frequency and it just happens so that a saw wave is very good for synthesizing strings. You might hear that it sounds a little bit like a string orchestra but not entirely quite like one. So, well, this is the basic thing. We have all the harmonics, even an odd. So there's plenty of tone, like to sculpt, but we need to change this a bit. Now, Patson has this very interesting feature that it enables you to sculpt a, the profile of a one harmonic, of every single harmonic, and we can observe that actually if we switch back to a sine wave of course I need to hit apply and you can see this is our sine wave which is for some reason having a two overtones or more, maybe that's some aliasing However, this is so quiet that I can't really like hear anything of that. But I can see it. It's measurable. It's more than 100 decibels below, so it's actually it's actually non-existent. It's just a trace. Okay, so let's get back to harmonic structure. And what we have is the bandwidth. This is the main control. If we increase that can see that our sound is getting wider and it's becoming more noise-like. And this is very good for simulating sounds that uh, try to imitate a lot of similar instruments playing together. However, uh, using detune values more than 50 cents, 50 cent, yo, is a little bit risky because it starts because the single harmonic starts to bleed in pitch so much to the sides that you can't, you, you, it actually starts to sound mm, detuned. It's sound, starting sounds disharmonic. Let's change back to the saw wave. And this is at 50. And this is... Okay, it's not. Like, let's go to 60. 77. 
90. Like to me, it sounds already like almost dis detuned. This might work for a very good um, trans pad. That, well, it almost blends into white noise in the higher harmonics, which is a little problem, but this might be what you want. However, we're gonna go for some less detuned sound, because we want to make this sound like a, well, orchestra. And as you can see, our harmonics have the Gaussian distribution, like this shape here. And we have the we can change the basic type of the distribution function, for example, to a square. And you can see that our harmonics actually like do this. There's also a double exponential function, which looks like this. And it sounds more like the Gaussian one, but it's a little bit different. Also, what we can do is change the number of bands per a simple single harmonic. And then it sounds more like uh, a few instruments playing together instead of just one. And this is what we're after. Of course, this sounds very detuned, and you can see in the higher harmonics that the actual sub bands that compose for single harmonics, like they are so close together that they blend into a like a metallic dissonant texture. And I think if we can hype as this. Well, this doesn't really sound musical. It sounds like a crash cymbal. A hi-hat. Look, like it, it's gonna, it, it can totally work for a ride sound. Especially if you play a dissonant chord. But we're not doing that today. So let's get back to low pass. Bring it up, change the stages down and bring up the sustain. All right. Well, this is um, kind of a more interesting, but very, very um, mathematically correct. It's too rigid. It's too shape. It's too perfect. So what I'm going to try to do is mess around with this distribution of harmonics. And you can do it in, in two ways. There's a stretch function, I guess, which make this distribution a little bit less boring. And it already, already sounds more like strings. But we can do also something else. Uh, and change the... Make it asymmetric. I don't know really how this function is called, or what is the theory that works behind it, but what it does, it makes this energy distribution across one harmonic asymmetric. And this is what we want. I think I can also change the bandwidth, like tune it down a bit. We're getting there. Also, uh, there are find some other cool stuff that you can do. For example, you can change the discrete mode. The disable is the profile of harmonic. And this means every harmonic generates just a single tone. And kind of sounds like a perfect saw but not exactly. As you can see on the waveform that the distribution of harmonic energy is like in a saw wave, the phase relationship of all of them is none like a saw wave. And this is, well, 
Interesting. There's also a continuous mode. It actually turns this uh, harmonic, uh, well, graph into a noise spectrum. And well, it doesn't make anything useful in our case, but we're going to get back to that later and do something interesting things with it. I mean, in the other videos, if you want. Okay, so this is our basic sound. And we need now to change the way the shape of our amplitude uh, envelopes. So I'm going to dial in more attack. And release. So the sounds lasts longer after I release the key. Well, it starts to resemble a string ensemble pretty well. However, there are a few things that we can tune to make this more realistic. Because it would totally work in a song if you wanted to have this sound. But it can be more less synthetic and more realistic if we go further with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is enable the low pass filter. Make it wider, so I'm decreasing the, cra the Q, the quality of the filler. If I increase it, we have the almighty resonance peak, but we don't want that. It, it's not the sound we are after. We could use some uh, frequency tracking for the filter so that the lower nodes have the filter uh, filtering a little bit more of the high energy. Let's try to dial it all the way up. And we need to actually tune down the filter's center frequency, uh, cutoff frequency, uh, the basic cutoff frequency. I guess it's too much. We can also make some motion. By gently adding an LFO to our filter. Now that's a wobble we don't want. But if we make this more delicate, more rare and sparse, and still more delicate, and also make it start in a random phase of the oscillator, because the LFO starts in a certain place, and looks like it's going up, yeah, it's starting right on the peak, here it is. If we turn it all the way left, it's going to be random. You can see this note started somewhere in the middle going downwards, and this one it was pretty on the low. So this might not be what we want, because, well, now this effect is so huge that, well, it makes it sound very random. It might be cool for some effects, but not for a realistic string ensemble. So I'm going to make it very subtle and also add some randomness. The amplitude randomness makes each peak uh, end and start in a different vertical place. And the frequency makes the cycles of LFO oscillator 
slower or faster. So it should be a little bit less mechanic. What we also have is LFO stretch. LFO stretch makes the LFO oscillation slower for lower notes. I think it's disabled, actually, because it's in the middle. If we tune it for the right, we will need to bump the frequency up also. Yeah, this is what is it. If we invert it, like go for the left, then it's faster for lower notes, which is a very interesting and very counterintuitive effect. All right, enough playing with this. I'm also gonna... Yeah, I think this is good. Like, you can see there's a little bit of motion, and because it starts randomly, if we play a chord... It all kind of evens out between the notes, but the voices are slightly waving. One is going up, the other is going down, and it sounds a little bit more natural. But it's not gonna work for a single note, rather. Like, I wouldn't use that effect for a single note, only if I want to play chords. Because, well, only if you have multiple voices is gonna do its job properly. Okay, there are two things I want to cover. And this is equalization and reverb. Uh, first, uh, a zoo for EQ. And the general thing... Okay, we've got this refreshed. Uh, the general thing is that every instrument, every physical instrument, has its own resonance, its own body resonance. Like the the box, the vibrating, resonating body of a violin has some resonating peaks uh, that make it, it has a, it, that gives the formant, like the human speech has a formant, actually every vowel has a formant because the cha shape of our mouth changes, but also the, <clears throat> but that's changing, like this is, these are changing formants, but the instrument, like guitars, violins, trumpets, they have static resonances, which also create a formant. And modeling this formant is sometimes something you can do to make this sound really realistic, or at least more realistic. If you want to do like some reading, there's a great article on Sound on Sound uh, about synthesizing strings and different, very different uh, articles. I'm gonna link it in the show notes, like in the description. But from what I remember, there are two main resonances for strings, and I'm not like doing this by numbers. I'm just doing this by ear and memory. However, the overall sound is getting more midi, more mid-range, less bottom and less high-end. We might want to add some low end for our double basses. So I'm gonna dial in a low shell filter. Mm. 
but it is kind of artificial. It's not exactly like what it sounds like in real life. Actually, like if we wanted to model a real string ensemble, we would have to model the individual instruments, make a few copies, change everyone a bit, and you know this can easily kill every CPU on the planet if you get more detail into it. But not, we're not dealing with that. We're making a simple string patch. String patch, patch, patch. Okay, so we have our basic sound. Let's add some reverb. Let's try some different stuff because the default free verb sounds a bit too metallic for me. But we also have random and bandwidth. I'm gonna try bandwidth first. Let's dial it all the way to wet so we hear only the reverb, not the original dry signal. And the big thing is that we have a bandwidth control. Which kind of enhances the width of our ensemble. And this might be good, it might be bad. We have initial delay enabled. And I want to dial it down a bit. I'm trying to simulate something like a concert hall. Well, I don't think it's going to be very good. Okay, this is something. Let's now try and make something new. Um, I'm going to disable Patson for now and enable Subsynth. Subsynth is a very different synthesizer. It generates white noise uh, stereophonic, like different for left and right channel, so it's very wide in stereo image. You can also make it monophonic. You could disable this. And it filters uh, harmonic frequencies out of that using bandpass filters. And we will try, I will try to dial in a simple saw wave harmonic series. So we have very simple something to help us like Mm, reinforce the patsim sound with something else to give it more life, give it m a little bit more character because it's always good if you're coming for spacey sounds to like try different approaches and mix them, blend them together. You can hear this sounds nothing like strings. I'm gonna change the scale, the magnitude scale. This is the like Normally, this is working linear, but the, the lower you go with the decibels, the, the, the more logarithmic it gets. It gets. We're, stunti we're starting with random, uh, if, uh, like every sample, every first hit is in a random position in the amplitude, so this creates clicks sometimes. Like sometimes bigger, sometimes lower, but there most of the time there is a click. You can change this to zero, which will always give us a soft start. Let's change the bandwidth. Give it more attack, and more release.
this sounds like it sounds like strings, but a very distant ones. I wonder what will happen if I like disturb the harmonic series by making it a little bit less harmonic. You can see what this does. Cool thing is that you can do this live. I guess I should be able to even automate this, like CC control it. Maybe not because I'm hosting it at Carla and I'm not pretty figured out how to do that. Oh, somehow I... Turn down the filter. Or velocity. Well, this doesn't sound like strings. Actually, I don't want the extra low end post that we have on our EQ because it sounds very, very boomy with this. So I'm going to dial back the low shelf. I wish I could use an oscillator to like copy and paste a saw wave harmonic series or just draw a line across this. Maybe it will happen in the new UI that Mark McCurry is is releasing soon. Okay, I'm gonna make this a little bit softer and maybe give it a little more attack. A little more, I said. Oh, I want to disable the uh, envelope stretch. Let's see how does it sound if we play it together with our pad synth. Well, the pad synth is very loud. Suddenly. I think we also need to add a Lopez filter for our substance because sometimes it gets a little bit too bright and feeds some noise that I don't want. Yeah, it was substance. I don't want the velocity sensing because it will make the noise come back if I hit it the uh, keys hard enough. Hey, I like the sound. All right. Well, one more thing I'm going to do is a little bit like different because well the patch is finished and it will be uh, you can download it in the, the link is in the description I'm gonna disable 
Zone sub effects internal reverb. And I'm gonna try and see what can we do with mverb, which is also an open source plugin. Uh, and I got to use it because Keg Studio ships it and it's easy to get that way. Well, this is all wet. We can make the bandwidth higher. We have some more high end. Let's mix it with the original one. And make everything louder. Well, I personally like the sound of mverb, and I like. I want to say check it out because it's an awesome plugin, and there's also a uh, LADSP version, so you can use it with LMMS and other hosts that don't uh, work with LV2. Yeah, Cake Studio is the way to get the best in Linux software. I think I'm gonna make a video about Cake Studio. Let's get back to our Zenith Sub Effects reverb. The bandwidth version sounds really good, nice too, yeah. I'm lacking a sustain paddle to finish this with a D. All right, this is it. Like we're 32 minutes in. I think, I hope you've learned something that what I showed you was useful. And let me know what you make, like if you're happy or if you want me to talk about something specific, if you have any questions about this or like questions in general about Linux audio, let me know, leave them in the comments. Download the patch if you want. Uh, make your own. That's a better way to learn, I guess. And, well, have fun with Zenith Sub Effects. It's an awesome synthesizer. I'm going to be doing a lot of videos about it. That's it. See you in the next video.